What is a URL or a URI? So let's talk about the names now that you're used to seeing online. You probably don't use YP addresses. Nobody does. They're hard to remember. Um, what we use are combinations of host names, protocols, and paths. And the way that these are structured is into something that was originally known as a uniform resource locator. And it's sort of been generalized and brought into this idea of a uniform resource identifier. So you'll see these sometimes referred to as URLs, sometimes referred to as URIs. The difference is not particularly important. Um, these, the history of the URL goes back to the web. So this was one of the really beautiful things that Tim Berners-Lee proposed along with the HTTP protocol, HTML as a markup language, was a naming scheme. So his naming scheme was this idea of a URL. URL was supposed to allow you to easily identify the document that you wanted to retrieve in your web browser and view. And in this case, let's look at an example of a web URL. So this is a site that you might use on a regular basis. I uh, will do uh, HTTP um, www.facebook.com. So let's break this into pieces, okay? Uh, every URL has a couple of different components. This part in here is a host name. This is translated by the domain name service into an IP address. So this part, I do a lookup, I translate into an IP address. Over here on the left, we have a protocol specifier, and then there's this separator. So you have a protocol specifier, and then I have this uh, colon slash slash. And actually, the Tim Berners-Lee has kind of talked about, well, did this really need to be here? Maybe this could have been a dot. Anyway, but, but this is the separator we use to set off the protocol from the host name. In this case, the protocol is HTTP. So what this is saying is, I want to uh, connect to, I want to retrieve this using the HTTP protocol from a computer uh, whose name is www.facebook.com, and I can translate that into IP address. The last part, kind of hanging out over here on the right, is what's called the path. And in the early web, the path actually, you know, was the path of an actual document. So there was a, there might have been a document. Uh, let's imagine this is login. I don't know, login.html, um, and so. This was actually a file name. Sometimes when you browse on the web, you'll see things that have an HTML extension or a PHP extension or something like that, and those might actually be files. So there might be a file on the web server sitting there somewhere in some directory that you are now retrieving that's called login.html. So the semantics of this are, um, you know, if I load this into a web browser and issue a GET request, what I'm doing is I'm retrieving a document called login.html from a host named www.facebook.com using the HTTP protocol. So this is the structure of a URI. Now, in on the web, this part over here, this path, the semantics of this path have totally changed. So in a lot of cases, the documents that you retrieve from a server are being generated on the fly. Um, and there's no, there might be no files sitting there called login or called login.html. Um, really what this path, what, what a lot of web servers are doing with this path is they're converting it into information that's passed to some function. So this is almost like making a function call, a remote function call, and the path is providing information to that function call. Um, and you know, you can set up a web server to interpret this path pretty much however you want. Uh, but in a lot of cases, just be aware that the path doesn't identify a static document. Instead, what it does is it provides more information to the web server that indicates what you want to do. So in this case, I want to show the login page. I don't even know if this exists. I just kind of made this URL up. Okay. So let's look at a different URL because you're really used to seeing these types of URLs and you're used to loading them in your web browser and you know, okay, that's familiar. Let me throw out a different URL, okay? Well, let's use GitHub.
Okay, so here's a different URL. Um, and the, the structure of this is somewhat similar, right? So we can, we can sort of map it onto the web URL that you're used to. Uh, I have a protocol over here. I have a host name in the middle. And on the right, I have some sort of path. Uh, but this, the semantics of these two URLs are totally different. Um, what this URL is doing, the host name is just github.com, uh, this is a get URL. And git uses URIs and URLs in, the, in a similar way to the way that uh, web browsers do. So git is a program that allows you to collaborate with other people on all sorts of things. Um, and what this would tell git is, I want uh, to identify a project. The project is, is located on this computer at hostname github.com. So I'm going to translate that hostname in the very same way that I would translate Facebook. And then the stuff over here is, again, a path that provides information to github.com about the project that I want to use. So if this existed, which it doesn't, um, I could potentially use, I could uh, type git, I could tell it that I wanted to clone this project, I could give it this identifier and it would do the right thing. So again, I identify, now this is using a different protocol, it's using the git protocol rather than the HTTP protocol. So the protocol is sort of like, here's the language I want to speak, here's the person or the computer I want to talk to, and here's the document or here's some information about what I'm trying to accomplish. So this is a semantic of a URI. You see these all over the place. Um, you might see FTP, you might see SSH. There's lots of different protocols that can be in the front here. Uh, the host names look uh, frequently pretty similar. And then the path has information that's frequently pretty specific to the actual application that's using the URI. But this is the structure of a URI.